welcome everybody. Our first timers, our returning members, and our regulars. It's always nice to see the familiar faces, and it's really nice to see new faces. I want to welcome all our PBSG staff that is here with us tonight to see our wonderful presentation in store with Debbie Adler. Um, and I want to make a note about Paul Chatlin, our founder of PBSG. He's the face of an amazing, inspirational story of going from nearly dying to strong, vibrant, and healthy through a plant based lifestyle. Um, He's behind all plant-based nutrition support group, and I'm so glad that he founded this wonderful, amazing organization to help support all of us in this path. For those that don't know me, I'm Megan Burt. I'm the director of community support groups for PBNSG. I've been living a plant-based life for going on 15 years. It's hard to believe. And my primary role with PBNSG is to support hosts and members of our community find success and celebrations with their plant-based lifestyles. I have a recently turned five-year-old who's plant-based whole foods. He's not had a single animal product in his life. And I credit his energy, his stamina, his endurance, his immunity all to the food that he is putting in his body because it's fuel and it's medicine. So uh, he's my inspiration behind everything I do with PBSG and my life outside of PBSG. For those that are new, PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, and we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to evidence-based education and advocacy of plant-based whole foods nutrition to help individuals prevent or reverse chronic disease and achieve optimal health. I want to remind everybody that you can visit our website for newsletters to register for events, to find community support information. We have a free event on the second Thursday of every month with a whole portion dedicated for Q&A. Um, you can ask our physician or dietitian questions. And please be on the lookout for our upcoming specialized groups, um, topics such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease, cooking, athletics, family life, the list goes on and on. So we're hoping to unroll that pretty soon. So make sure you subscribe to our website if you're not already subscribed so you can learn more about that. Um, also know that you can follow PBNSG on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And um, I will give you our, our upcoming events right now. So that way I can just officially give the floor to Debbie right after. Um, on Tuesday, April 20th, that's a week from today, we have the vegan MD, Dr. Miranda Graham. On Thursday, April 29th, we have a plant-based springtime lunch with Heidi Shield. And then Thursday, May 6th, we have Dr. Scott Harrington with the Vegan Primary Care. So lots of exciting events coming up. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce our feature presentation, Debbie Adler. I'll give a brief bio and then she will have the floor. Um, she's a plant-based chef and she's gonna present on how to shake the salt habit. Uh, reducing sodium as much as possible is one of the goals in this plant-based lifestyle. Salt, salt can cause kidney stones, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, which leads to heart disease and strokes. So Debbie will share 15 ways, 15, to add explosive flavor to food, as well as share different combinations of spices, herbs, and vinegars to achieve a different flair with various ethnic cuisines. Debbie Adler is a plant-based chef and cookbook author of the award-winning cookbook, Sweet Debbie's Organic Treats and Sweet, Savory and Free. Debbie and her recipes have appeared on NBC's Nightly News and have been featured in national magazines and newspapers such as Pilates Style, Simply Gluten-Free, Allergic Living, The LA Times and The New York Times. Debbie is the owner of DebbieAdler.tv, which I'll put in the chat box in a few minutes. And she's creator of the Master Classes Plant Powerful, Powerful Life GPS, Quintessential Health 360 Degrees, and the Complete Plant Powerful Weight Loss System. So without further ado, thank you, <laughs> Debbie, for being here. We're so excited. I'm going to spotlight you. And please, if you have any questions, type them into the chat box. All right. You have the floor, Debbie. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Megan. Um, thank you for being here. And I'm I'm connected to you right away, you guys, because uh, plant passionate people are my kind of people. I know that you're 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 with it. You've got it. You understand um, how important this is. And I just wish everybody in the world could think like us, only because it would serve them well. And so I honor you for being here, and I thank you. Um, so before I tell you about all the ways you could flavor your food, I just 
thought you might want to a little bit of a, a background as to what led me to this lifestyle because it's a little bit uh, unconventional. Um, I started out as a CPA on Wall Street and it was all greed and carbs and I would eat my way through tax season with Fig Newtons and pints of ice cream and I didn't care <laughs> after four years of this. I look like Miss Piggy in it with an attache case. And I was very unhappy. And I realized that this was not the way I was, you know, gonna live the rest of my life. It just, it wasn't sustainable. Uh, and I actually quit my job. I had nothing lined up and I moved to California. And that's where my, my life really began. I uh, started understanding food more and how, how it affects our body. And I actually start, you know, my sweet tooth was still there. I still wanted my Fig Newtons. I still wanted my ice cream, but I, I started to realize sugar is probably not the best thing to be putting in my body. And I went to Whole Foods and I said, oh, yeah, let me see if there's some sugar-free treats without sucralose that I could find. And there was nothing at the time. This is like, you know, 18 years ago, there was nothing. Now you could find a lot of things, but at the time, believe it or not, even Whole Foods didn't have sugar-free treats. And I thought, well, you know, maybe somebody needs to do this. Why not me? And so I started to do experiments with different uh, really good sweeteners. Um, like, like at the time it was xylitol, then I switched to coconut nectar and a little bit of stevia and, you know, using combinations. And I came up with a nice formula and I opened Sweet Debbie's Organic Cupcakes and Hollywood came knocking. It seemed like a lot of people wanted this. And uh, I, it became very successful right away. And I, and I knew that, okay, this is, this is a good path for me. I felt good. I was helping people eat sweets, but in a healthy way. Then I met a Jewish doctor. I got married and I had my son. And my son was born with severe and life-threatening food allergies. And I didn't uh, understand how food could almost kill him. This is exactly what happened. He anaphylacted to, to, to dairy and to sesame seeds and flaxseed of all things, which is supposed to be healthy for you. And I started to do a lot of research on food because I really needed to understand what was going on. And in my research, I was led to the China study, which I hope you have all read. If you haven't, please, please get the China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. This is the Bible of the plant-based lifestyle, the whole food plant-based lifestyle that started with Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And this kind of started me on my journey. As soon as I read that, I signed up to go to the Plant-Based Nutrition Healthcare Conference, which is where he speaks and all, all the rock star plant-based doctors go to speak, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Michael Greger, all the guys that we know and love who we look up to, 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 to teach us. And they were all there and I met them all and, and they, they, they explained how you can reverse and prevent disease by eating this way. And I can't tell you how excited I was. My, my husband is a doctor, as I mentioned, and his his patients have all these diseases that can be prevented with a lifestyle like this. You know, they have diabetes, they have heart disease, they have hypertension. And I ran home and I said, you have to tell them about this. This, this can help them. And, um, you know, a lot of people are resistant. That's why I honor you guys for being here because he, he would tell them about it, but a lot of them don't want to change. They just want a pill. And that's it. And then they want to keep doing what they've been doing, eating what they've been eating. So it's that that part of it is is frustrating in, for the medical professionals. Um, so I started to get really into this and developing my own recipes and starting a blog and creating courses and then started to to get more, you know do do uh, FaceTime lives and. To, to really get out there and show people what's possible. I started doing dinner parties to test my recipes, you know, to un unbeknownst to my neighbors, I was really uh, using them to see if they would like, without telling them, to see if they would like what I put out there to, you know, all, the, all these recipes I was creating without animal protein, without salt, without sugar, without oil, 
to see if they would eat it. Not only did they eat it, they went up for seconds, for thirds. And, and at the end, I would tell them, you know, you just ate a plant-based meal. And they were so shocked. They were like, what do you mean? What, what's that? And I, well, there's no animal protein. There was no sugar. There was no salt. There was no, there was no oil. And, and they were blown away. And that's when I knew that I had something special. So I put together my recipes in a book. And to come full circle with all this, the publishers of the China study published my cookbook, Sweet, Savory, and Free. I have another cookbook that was published a few years before that, that was based on my bakery because I did start a bakery. I told you about, you know, Sweet Debbie's Organic Cupcakes. Um, so this was my second cookbook published by the publishers of the China study. So now I'm going to show you how I came up with or what I came up with to flavor my food. And so you can fool your neighbors as well <laughs> when you have your dinner parties, when it's safe to do so. So um, the first thing I wanna tell you is the American Heart Association says, they suggest that we only eat 1500 milligrams of salt per day, per day. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what 1500 milligrams looks like. It is one teaspoon, okay? That's what we should have every day. That's it. Okay, that's one teaspoon. And that's what they say is safe. You do need some salt. You shouldn't cut it out completely. It's something that we need in our bodies to help us um, regulate our body fluids. However, more than 1500 is gonna to start to get us into trouble as Megan mentioned, all those lovely diseases that we can experience that's going to happen eventually, maybe, maybe not today or tomorrow, but it, over time, yeah, we might get hypertension. Yeah, it might lead to a stroke and we don't want that to happen because it is preventable. So this is why I do what I do. I want to keep you healthy and strong for a very, very long time. So the first flavor hack that I'm gonna show you, and I'm sure you do this already, uh, is lemon juice. Lemon juice is really salty with no sodium and you can squeeze it on anything, on salads, on rice. Um, another thing I do is I actually zest it. The zest has essential oils that make it even more lemony. Not only that, but it has anti-cancer properties. So, and, and boost your immunity. So the peel is very important. So zest on top of the lemon juice is a really great thing to do. Okay, and I'm gonna show you, maybe throughout, I'm gonna show you in my books how this looks when, you know, if I just show you a lemon, maybe it's not too appetizing, but if I show you the actual recipe that results from using it, I think I might inspire you a little bit more. So I'm just gonna show you quickly that this is my lemon orange, uh, so lemon orange, this is ah, my lemon orange cauliflower and it does have both the zest. It has the lemon zest, it has the orange zest and it's one of my most popular recipes. It's delicious. It's you know, it's, it's an Asian inspired recipe. And um, I also have a little secret that I'm going to share with you. Um, when I had, when I, my bakery is not open right now, but when I had my bakery open, a customer said to me, you know, when, when I get your brownies, I squeeze lemon juice on top. And I was like, what do you do? What? Like, are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, it's really good. You got to try it. I squeeze lemon juice on top of your gourmet chocolate mesquite brownies. Okay. These are the brownies he was talking about that he always ordered. And I said, okay, Mike, I'm going to try it. And I did it. I ran home. I made the brownies and it was outstanding. It was sublime. It was otherworldly, the salty and the sweet. It was, uh, I can't, I can't explain it. It was bright. It was delicious. And I was hooked. I was like, I'm putting this lemon stuff on all my chocolate. So, so that's another way to think about lemon is maybe you could, you know, to offset the sweet on certain things, squeeze the lemon juice. 
Okay, so the second thing that I do is, I'm sure you do it too, it's, it, is, it is not so unconventional, is, is, this, is, this is red onion. Red onion is my favorite. It's very, very pungent. It has a lot of good health qualities. Um, you saute, but too, it, it's very, it's, this is very strong. When you have a raw onion in anything, it's, it's going to be really, really strong and it may be too strong for some people. So what I do is I mostly saute the onion, which softens it, it becomes sweeter. And I prefer it that way. And to saute, um, instead of oil, to do it really whole food plant-based, you want to do a saute in water, in vegetable broth, in carrot juice, any, any liquid other than oil is good. And I just wanted to show you some pictures of onion that I use in my recipes because I think you'll get really excited. <laughs> this is my naan. When you do some Indian food, that's caramelized onion on top. It's out of this world. And I just leave it on top. For, for the uh, for the nan. And I also put it on top of, it's all Greek to me pizza. I don't know if you could see the uh, onion on top there. That goes on top of pizza. And there's a ton. I mean, you just, there's no, there's no end to what you can do with onion because it's, it's just, it goes well with a lot of different foods. Um, another uh, way that I, uh, flavor my food. And, and I'm sure you have your own, you know, uh, spices and herbs that you like, but this is just my favorite. So you can just um, use what you like. I'm going to use, I'm going to tell you what I like, and then you can, and do it, do what you like at home. I like cumin. Cumin is a, a nutty, earthy spice. Um, I use it a lot in hummus, in guacamole, in rice dishes. Uh, mostly like Mexican, Middle Eastern type of, of recipes. Let me see if I have any cumin um, pictures <laughs> that I could show you. Um, Debbie, that I could interrupt you if I have yeah. a question. We have a question. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Can you recommend a good low sodium bouillon or broth or the like? Well, I, I make my own. I don't, I don't buy that. I make my own. It's just... Uh, you put in carrots, onions, and celery in a pot with water, and and then you just put a lot of water in, and then you let it go for like I don't know an hour and a half, and you get the sweetest, most delicious broth without any sodium. So I don't really know any broth because I don't use I don't use it. I just make my own. That that's really the best way anyway, because then you know what you're putting in it. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of them use salt, a lot of them use oils even in the broth. So, and you don't need that and you don't need the extra sodium. So it's much, for me, it's much easier actually just to make it and then have it in, you know, if you make a lot, you can freeze some of it and just put some in the fridge because it does go bad after seven days. So you just either make a smaller batch, keep it in the fridge in a jar, mason jar, and you have it, you could use your sautés for that or even soup or whatever you're making and just do it every Sunday. I do it on the weekend and you have it for the week. And that's, I think that's the best way. Thank you. And also before you show us another tasty dish in your cookbook, can you show us the front of your cookbook? I think it's the sweet, savory and free. Yes, I have that one. Yes, it's wonderful. And yeah. you can, we can get it directly on your website or on Amazon, correct? Yeah, yeah, any, yeah, Amazon, yep. Yeah, Barnes and Noble, any, any, any bookseller. Um, All right. Okay. We sorry so we this, distracted you. That, that's okay. You can interrupt me anytime you like. Okay. Um, so this is falafel. I use cumin in this falafel dish. So that's a, a Middle Eastern dish that I've used it in. Um, that's, uh, it's in all my Mexican dishes. I don't know if I have any other pictures right now, but that, that was the one I wanted to show you for, for cumin, because uh, people may not think you could use it in, in falafel, but I, I, it's very good in falafel. Um, okay, and then I, uh, oh, this is very exciting, people. This is, this is smoked, this is smoked paprika, okay? Smoked paprika is, uh, regular paprika is smoking hot sister. I gotta tell you, this Spice Girl is out of this world. 
it has, um, uh, it, it just takes on a whole new aromatic dimension that paprika just doesn't. Um, I have nothing against regular paprika, um, but this is so much better that I end up just using smoked paprika. So it is really good. If you've never tried smoked paprika, I, I really highly suggest that you start using it. Um, you use it in paella, in uh, any sort of bean burger or a veggie burger. I use it in, in sauces. Um, it has, see how red it is? It contains beta carotene and retinol, which is good for your skin. Um, I think I have some pictures here of smoked paprika recipes that you can start drooling over. Let's see. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, see, now this is a surprise. This is my margarita pizza wheels. So this is actually an Italian dish. And um, I, use, I use the smoked paprika in that. So it's you know, sometimes um, it's surprising what you can use for what ethnic cuisine. And it comes out really, really good. I think that was the only one I had. For, I, I, I use it a lot, though. So, but um, yeah, so that, that was smoked paprika. OK, so that's really exciting. I think I, when I was introduced to smoked paprika, I was really excited. So, <laughs> so if you've never used it, you've got to try it. So then, oh, I have dill. So dill is so fragrant. And it's just like this grassy, fresh herb that comes, you have, can have it fresh or you can have it dried. And so, oh, here, here's the dried or fresh. So if you can't get it fresh, you use the dried. It has, it has the same kind of flavor. Is there a certain um, brand? We have a question. Do you have a certain brand for organic spices? Spicely, Spicely, S-P-I-C-E-L-Y is a very good clean brand. Like I said, my son was born with severe food allergies. They are very clean. They're very good with, you know, cross-contamination issues. They, they're very careful about that. So Spicely is a good organic brand, I would uh, highly suggest. And, um, you know, when, when I use dill, I think of uh, like matzo ball soup. Because <laughs> My mother used to put the, the dill in the matzo ball soup. So, um, what I did was I came up with a gluten-free vegan matzo ball that I, I think I found the holy grail when I, when I came up with that because people went bananas over it because it's very hard to make a matzo ball without egg. Um, oh, before I show you the matzo ball, this is a spanakopita enchilada where I use dill on top. And so, you know, this is like fusion. I like, I like fusion. So that's like a Greek Mexican dish using dill. So it's not always obvious where you're going to use the, the herb or the spice. But I'm telling you, the, the matzo ball is, is really where you're, you're going to, this is the, this is the matzo ball soup with uh, the matzo balls that are gluten-free and vegan. And the little bit of dill on top brings you back to, you know, to Jewish penicillin, <laughs> which is which is, you know, chick chicken soup is considered Jewish penicillin, but of course this was done without chicken and it's still very, very good and, and healthful and, and therapeutic. Um, the next one is caraway seeds. Now, you know, a lot of people don't like mm, caraway seeds because it, they're licorice. Like you have to like licorice. They have a very strong licorice like taste. Um, you could toast them. Um, I like to put them in coleslaw and potato salad. Um, in soda bread, and I'll show you some pictures of that. There, uh, there are many things that I put them in that normally normal people wouldn't put. Them in. <laughs> but I, I happen to love caraway seeds so much that I probably overuse them. But that's just my taste. You don't uh, have to do what I do, but um, just a suggestion. So this is like a New York City type flatbread. I put them on top. Uh, make this is from the same book uh, flatbread I put on the so it reminds me of New York where I'm from and then I put them in my salad my my coleslaw which also uh, this is creamy cabbage and apple slaw with a kick and it has the caraway seeds in there and uh, where else ah I know where this is <laughs> this is another place I have the caraway seeds these are my yam jam soda bread muffins of course 
I make them every uh, St. Patrick's Day. If you can see that, um, that has caraway seeds. It's, it's, it's soda bread, but mini, mini muffin eyes. I put them in mini muffin tins and everybody gets their own mini muffin. And then let's see, we have chili flakes. So chili flakes are very, very hot. If you don't like spice, you do not want to use chili flakes, okay? So they add uh, just a lot of uh, heat to your food. If you like heat and if you like spice, you're going to use chili flakes. Um, it's, you know, it could burn your kishkas out, but it's actually very good for digestion. Um, so it's, it's like, uh, it's like a, you know, you, you don't know what you're going to get because you, you, <laughs> you feel the burning, but it's actually good for you. So I don't know if you can take it, um, then, then have it because it really, it boosts your metabolism. It's healthy. And I use it a lot. I like spice. I use it in my sriracha. Um, this is, uh, sriracha hemp noodles. This is, I just sprinkle it on top. This is sriracha hemp noodles, sort of like the noodles you get at maybe like a Chinese restaurant. Um, and you, we have a question. Uh, is, yeah. is a chili flake the same as a red pepper flake? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the same. I believe it's the same. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think so. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I sure. I, I think I agree with you because my husband likes spicy and so we have chili flakes in our pantry. And sometimes it's labeled red pepper flakes. So I think they're one and the same. I think so. I, yeah, I wouldn't concern myself. I think it's the same. You know, it, it looks the same. It tastes the same. I'm sure it's it's pretty much the same. Um, oh, another one is dried oregano. So this is oregano. Mm, and you can use this in tomato centric dishes. As you know, you know, oregano is used a lot in Italian dishes. And, uh, you know, I use it in my eggplant parmesan, which is very popular. Before I was married, I used to make eggplant parmesan for all my boyfriends, <laughs> um, including my husband. That's why he married me. Um, and, that, and, and, and that's just the way it is. And oregano goes in there. You win it the heart to the stomach. Yeah, exactly. Um, where is it? The parm is really good. It's just, I make everything in um, ramekins a lot of times because it's portion control, but you really don't need, have to worry about portion control when you eat whole food plant-based because it's, um, you know, it's all good for you. And I don't count calories. You shouldn't either. Um, but I like, you'll see it's in a ramekin if I could find it. Where is it? In my oregano. We have a question about the Parmesan cheese that you use for your eggplant Parmesan. Do you make your own Parmesan or do you buy a store-bought Parmesan for plant-based Parmesan? Oh, I make, I make it. I make it. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's, it's made of seeds, basically. It's made of seeds and it's, um, I'll read it to you. It's uh, in here somewhere. Uh, I'll tell you exactly what's in it. It's a really good mix that I keep in my fridge at all times. Uh, Parmesan, page 24. I make one with cash, cashews and uh, nutritional yeast, garlic salt. Oh, oh, okay. Well, this is an allergy-free book. I don't use cashews in this book. Um, so it's sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, nutritional yeast, hemp seeds, oregano, garlic powder, and red pepper flakes. And that's my parm. And I keep it in the fridge and you can just, you know, put it on anything that you want to have that cheesy uh, kind of taste. It's really, really good um, for anything. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a tomato. It doesn't have to be tomato centric, but um, all right, the eggplant is hiding from me. So I'll, I'll just skip that for now. But yeah, you could use oregano on anything. As you know, I'm sure it's a very popular one. Um, it's very healthy too. It, it decreases inflammation. So um, it's, it's, it's a good one to have around. Um, so peppers, the, this is a jalapeno. Um, as you know, jalapenos are very spicy and you can have them raw. You can uh, saute them. You could roast them. You could stuff them. Uh, it's, this is something also that if you like heat in your food, you're going to add a little uh, of this, of this kind of pepper, the lots of peppers, the serrano peppers, habanero peppers, 
Um, if you um, want to live to see the day, <laughs> the next day, you take out the seeds because with the seeds, it becomes 10 times stronger. So, you know, I add them to burritos. I add them to rice. Uh, let's see, jalapenos. Let me see if I could show you a picture of a jalapeno. Ah, yes, here we go. Um, oh, see, now this is another thing. This is pad thai. You wouldn't think of pad thai, but pad, this is my pad thai. If you could see there, there are jalapenos on top of my pad thai. And um, uh, this is my uh, lentil enchiladas. So I have, uh, these are lentil enchiladas and I, and I put the, if you could see that, the, uh, these are serrano peppers on top of that to make it a nice spicy bite. So that's the uh, peppers. Now this is really exciting guys. Hold on to your seats. This is like the best invention since table salt. It's called sea kelp, okay? These are fronds. These are sea kelp fronds. So you can get in any, probably any store, but I get them at Whole Foods. And these are salty without a lot of sodium. That's the exciting part. So it's salty without a lot of sodium. It has a little bit of sodium, but not that much. And it's really healthy. Sea vegetables have more calcium than any food on the planet, minerals, vitamins. Uh, you should add it to your diet if you don't already. And what I do is... I uh, put this in, I, uh, first I, I cut it up. I put it in the blender along with some pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds. And that's it, nothing else. You don't need anything else. And then you have a, a, a very salty condiment that you could pour like salt on anything. So this is, this is on the table every single meal because this is like using salt, but you're not getting all that sodium. It's very low in sodium. So, so it's, it's the frond, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, and then you just blend it. Not too much, because then you'll get tahini. You don't want tahini. You want, you want it to be dry still and flake-like. Very exciting. Just discovered this and it saved my life. Because I do like salt. So I'm, you know, I'm grateful that there is some sort of a substitute so that you can enjoy your meals just like you would with salt, but we not have. have... We have a few questions about salt, if I can interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, from Bob, uh, we have, do you use sea salt versus table salt? And I, cause I understand that sea salt is better for you. No, we don't use any salt. We don't, it, well, in, in a whole food plant-based lifestyle, you optimally don't want to use any salt, no salt. So we're, that's why I'm trying to show you different ways to substitute for salt so that you don't have to use the sea salt. I mean, people think it's healthier, but it's not because sodium is sodium. They say Himalayan salt is, no, it's all sodium. It's a lot of sodium and you wanna prevent that because then it's the same thing we talked about earlier with you're gonna get the kidney stones, the hypertension, the, the heart disease. So you try to avoid any salt. Okay. And then a question from Pauline, is that recipe with the sea kelp fronds in the book from your cookbook? No, actually this is new, this, oh, sorry. This is, this is something I just made up like three weeks ago. So okay. it's not in the book, um, it's in the new book. I have something coming out later this year, but it's not in this past book, Sweet Savory and Free. So it's just, like I said, it's, I don't know, um, maybe eight uh, pieces of this. And a, I don't know, like the third of a cup of um, the, the pumpkin seeds and maybe a quarter cup of the sesame and just blend it to your, you know, to, to a shakeable flake-like consistency. And then you have this. So that's, that's the recipe, yeah. And we have one uh, guest asking if it tastes fishy because it's kelp. Not at all. Okay. Nope, 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 no fish. Doesn't taste fishy, not to me. No. No, I have a cup as well. Do you? Um, what do you think of miso in place of salt? I, you know, 
I know that people use it and, and sometimes I use it as well. That, that's high in sodium as well. But if you use like a tablespoon to add a little flavor, I'm sure that's okay. Dr. Michael Greger uses a lot of miso in his recipes. I have his cookbook and he uses miso. So I think it's okay. Uh, just, you know, you don't overdo it and I'm sure you're gonna be fine. Okay, we've got two more questions before you continue. What do you think of tamari or liquid aminos? or coconut aminos? Uh, yeah, coconut aminos. I use them in my recipes as well. Um, they, they are reduced in sodium, so that's good. It's less than soy sauce, so it's a, a definitely a better alternative than soy sauce. So yes, I, I use coconut aminos. I don't so use what about, what about the liquid aminos, because I know the liquid aminos is different than the coconut aminos. Oh, I don't use liquid aminos. I, I think it's probably just as high in sodium as soy salt. I, 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 sorry, as soy sauce. Um, so I, I only use the coconut aminos because I know for a fact that it's way, it's reduced, uh, reduced sodium. Yeah. And then also, where do you get the sea kelp? You can get it at Whole Foods, you can get it online. Um, I, I would think any grocery store, but just to play it safe, if you have a Whole Foods, I know they have a section of uh, sea vegetables at Whole Foods. So I, or just get it online. They have it on Amazon. So if you know, if you don't want to go to the store yet, if you're still playing it safe, just go, go online and they, you can order it online. Okay. And yeah. Some ideas on how you use the kelp mix, the kelp mix that you had in the shaker. What are some ideas that you put that on? Well, um, you know, if you want to make, uh, you know, like a, maybe like a chickpea salad or, you know, a fake tuna salad, you could use it in that. Uh, use it like salt. If whatever you want salty, just put it on that. It's really like salt. So put it on anything that you would want salty because it's not going to give it like, oh, you know, like I said, it's not fishy per se. It's say salty, you know, it has a salty sort of a chewy because of the pumpkin seeds, you know, you get that chewiness. So it's really fun. I put it on rice um, mostly. Um, I, you know, I, I put on everything. It's so good. Salad, vegetables, popcorn, probably lot, anything you salt. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you would put salt on. Yeah. Okay. And another question um, on the sweet side, do you recommend honey or maple syrup or neither? Oh, 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 definitely not honey. Um, I, I use coconut nectar. So, so coconut nectar is like maple syrup. However, it's low glycemic. So if you use maple syrup, you're going to get this high spike in your blood sugar, which is not good. You're going to get your, your body's going to get out of whack. It's like having sugar. I mean, maybe it's a little better that maybe if you use dark maple syrup, it's, it's a little better than sugar, but you're, you're going to get a high glycemic reaction in your body. And that that's not good for you, but coconut nectar, which is also like maple syrup in terms of sweetness doesn't it's not high glycemic it's low glycemic which means that it's more regulated it's not going to spike your blood sugar and it has more minerals and vitamins and a little less calories and that's what i recommend coconut nectar i use a uh, coconut secret brand they're very good because i've used a lot of different brands and coconut secret is the brand that i ended up using for everything because they they taste the best. They have the best tasting coconut nectar. Now, if one can't find coconut nectar easily, do you have an, another option that you can recommend for some sweet agave? Do you recommend agave? No, I do not recommend agave. Please don't use agave. It's not good for you. Um, I, I would get, I would get a guy, I mean, I would get coconut nectar online if you can't find this or it is in the stores though. I mean, it's really popular now. So every store has it. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to find it, but if you can find it for some reason in your local grocery store, get it online, just okay. get it online. Your, your life is worth it. And this is what I tell people, you know, who say, oh, it's expensive. It's $8 a bottle. You know what I say to that? I say, well, so is getting sick. That's very expensive. You know, uh, uh, just just one one visit to the doctor, your 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 bill is going to be astronomical. Even just the 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 pre, not the premium, the um, the copay, it, it's less than a copay. 
you know, if you want to, if you want to save money, save it on doctor bills and save it on hospital bills, because this will keep you healthy and you don't have to go so go to the doctor so much. So it is expensive. Coconut nectar is expensive. Well, so is maple syrup expensive. So you might as well get the expensive thing that's healthier. So get it online. It's, it's on Amazon. Coconut Secret has their own way of shipping. Um, get a prime account. So it's free shipping and then you're good to go. You could always have it in the house. Okay. And we have, I guess we're now talking about sugar, monk fruit. Are you uh, vetoing monk fruit as well? Or is that okay? That's okay. That's good. That's actually good. Yeah. It's, it's natural. It's 300 times sweeter than sugar. And, you know, you know, you use just a little bit to, to whatever, for whatever purpose, you know, if it's your coffee, if it's your baked good, whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's fine. And another uh, sweet question, jaggery. I never even heard of jaggery. Jabbery? Jaggery. Jaggery. J A G G E R Y. I don't look know. that one up. I have to look it up. Okay. I, we have, I have we have no idea. Question. There, the questions are coming in. It's hard to keep up. Okay. Do you subscribe to FMD, fasting mimicking diets, per Dr. Walter Longo, the longevity diet? Okay. Mm, I know. Okay. No. You do see plant based whole foods, real food, and no counting calories and no fasting. Yeah, I don't fast. I think, you know, if you want to do intermittent, I, 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 I don't, I mean, sure, if you want to fast one day, I don't see the harm, but it's not like something I would do on a regular basis. I don't think it's sustainable. You want to do something that's sustainable because then you're miserable, you're hungry, you're, you're cranky, you hate life. You know, um, I, I, I don't like to do things like that. I've never been able to diet. That's, that's for sure. Uh, so I had to figure out a way to eat that was good. And I didn't have to deprive myself. That's just me. I cannot be on a diet. It doesn't work. And nobody should be on a diet because that's not sustainable. You don't want to have to starve yourself. You don't want to have to like be cranky and, and like deprive yourself of things that you like to lose a little weight. And then, okay, I'm off my diet. Now I'll go back. And then you gain the weight and then you're upset. And then it's a, like a vicious cycle. So you have to learn how to live and eat where you're enjoying your, your food and you're maintaining your optimal weight. And that's what a whole food plant-based diet does. You, you lose weight naturally because you're eating just vegetables and fruits and whole grains and nuts and seeds. And then you're sustaining it naturally. You're not counting calories. You're not measuring. You're just eating a a healthy meal every single meal of the day. And uh, a question from Lawrence in regards to, you know, plant-based whole foods. Uh, To avoid oil, what is your opinion on coconut milk and coconut sugar? Because obviously coconut has oil. Uh, Yeah, um, well, coconut milk is fine. Um, I know that some of these doctors that I mentioned, like, you know, Dr. Greger doesn't like coconut milk. He um, has something against that because of how fatty it has a lot of fat in it. Um, I I don't use coconut milk, but um, I I make my own plant-based milks. Um, You know, I make cashew milk, I make um, hemp milk. I make, you just put it in a blender, like a cup of cashews or almonds or hemp seeds and then add water, like three to one ratio, three cups of water to one cup of the nut or seed, and you have your milk. Now, that to me is the best. Oh, and I put in a date. I put in a medjool date to make it a little bit sweet, and I add it to coffee, and I use it for for baking. Coconut milk, you know, I don't see the harm if you're not, like, gulping it down, you know, gallons and gallons of it. Um, I know some, like I said, Dr. Michael Greger, and there's another doctor, oh, McDougal, doesn't doesn't like people to have it. Um, but I don't know, maybe they have their reasons. I don't, I don't see the harm. It's better than, it's better than dairy milk. I know that. So, um, and coconut sugar. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, yeah, it's sugar, but it's also a low glycemic sugar. So it's better than regular sugar. It's better than white sugar. So, um, yeah. So I, I would say, um, a little bit of, you got to, somebody's trying to call my um somebody, my son uses my phone somebody's trying to to call him on my phone uh Sean you got to tell your friends not to be calling right now um so <laughs> no worries yeah, I heard you what 
No worries. We still heard you. You were still there. Oh, you heard me. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, a little bit of coconut sugar is okay. I know that I use it a little bit in my baked goods. Um, so yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Just don't pour, you know, like three cups of it in your, in your, you know, coffee cake or something. You know, it's just like a little bit, a sprinkle on top of your whatever, on your, <laughs> whatever you're making. I think, I think that's fine. Yes. Okay. Now, since you know we've gotten this sidetracked on the sugar, and the topic tonight was uh, sodium and salt, um, so I'll bring us back on track. If you had to list your favorite alternate sodium source that makes something taste salty, but it's not salt, what would you recommend? What's your your go to tip for anyone trying to avoid sodium and salt? Well, I would say is the sea kelp right now. I mean, that's my that's my right now. That's my go to because it's salt tea, it's really salty. You don't have to pretend it's actually really salty and you can just salt anything you want. It's lower in sodium, it does have some sodium, but I would use this. This is my go-to, yeah. I, didn't, oh, I, was, I thought I couldn't tell if someone unmuted and asked a question or was that your son? Okay, but I kept interrupting you with questions so you can, you can continue unless you, you wanna take... Um... Oh. Oh, uh, we only got up to 11. I'm, I'm doing 15. <laughs> okay, keep going then. We interrupted you with a bunch of questions and I got oh, to okay. on track about sodium. So, um, so sauteed mushroom. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, you got to tell your friends to stop calling. Uh, <laughs> oh, to be popular is just, um, so yeah. So sauteed mushrooms, when you saute mushrooms, in their own juice, like, um, or, or just in water, they, they emit their own juice. And the broth, if you can see it on the bottom here, has an umami taste to it, it's very bold, very meaty. And you can use that as a, a flavor enhancer. So that's what I do um, with shiitake mushrooms. I make this umami-like broth, which comes out just by sauteing them. And you could add it to soups and to grains, and it's really, really delicious. Um, another thing that I use is vinegars. Uh, vinegars are very bold. Um, as you can see, I use a lot of apple cider vinegar. That's my go-to. Um, but I know a lot of people use balsamic and um, other flavor types of vinegars. And um, you can put it in dressings. I also use mirin, which is a Japanese rice wine vinegar. I use that a lot um, for some Asian recipes. Uh, let's see if I, uh, I mean, you just, I use it even in baking uh, because it helps the baking, uh, bake good rice. So um, vinegars are another way I splash it on my vegetables to, uh, before I roast them. So instead of a lot of people use oil, instead of doing that, I just splash some, some apple cider vinegar and I roast it that way. And it, it's very flavorful as well. Can you freeze the mushroom broth? I, I never have. I've never had reason to, you know, because it doesn't make that much. There's no, I mean, I'm sure it would because I freeze regular broth, but yeah, I'm sure you could. I, it's just, it's just liquid. So I'm sure it would be like freezing water, basically. It just becomes an ice cube. So I'm sure you could. Yeah. I don't see why not. Okay. Um, can Another you recommend, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still getting, I'm still getting a lot of questions. Um, okay. Can you recommend a good store-bought dressing that's low or no sodium? Or do you just make all your dressings? I make, I make my own dressing. I have not bought dressing in years. I can't even begin. I don't even know. I don't even know what's out there on the market. I really don't. That's not one of my things that I buy. Um, but I do have a lot of dressing recipes and that's really all I can tell you. It's like so easy to make your own dressing. You should really get in the habit of just making your own. It's really, it's too easy not to do it yourself because they always use oil and they always use salt. And I, I can't even think of a brand that wouldn't, um, you know, you just put together some apple cider vinegar, some nutritional yeast. Um, you know, a splash of mustard, maybe, a, you know, a teeny bit of stevia if you want, want the sweetness or coconut nectar and you shake it up and you have a delicious vinaigrette. I mean, it is so easy to make your own dressing. Are so there, are, there, 
So your recipes are for dressings. Are they in your cookbook, sweet, savory? And yeah, sweet? yeah, they're in, they're in the they're in the book, and they're in my meal plans more so. Actually, I I really got into making my own dressings after the book came out. So I I have them in my meal plans in my courses. I have tons and tons of recipes, just just dressings to to t- teach you how to do that for yourself, and just make it on the weekend. Put it in a nice jar, and you have it for the whole week. And you're more apt to eat a salad because what's a salad without dressing? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know many people who put nothing on their salad. I need at least some balsamic vinegar and pepper. Yeah, and right, them. right, exactly. Okay, so on, I think we're on to number 12 or number 13. Yeah, we're on to 12. Okay. Um, so, oh no, 13, sorry. So cilantro. Um, this is actually dried cilantro. Um, I couldn't get it from the farmer's market this week and they didn't have it, but you know, it comes in these little jars or you get it fresh and actually dried powdered cilantro is called coriander. And so I use the coriander in my baked goods recipes. Now this is an acquired taste. I didn't always like cilantro and, and a lot of people hate cilantro, but the reason I, uh, and I used to, I used to be on the other side of cilantro saying, oh, there's no way. But what changed my mind was when I went on a field trip with my my son's uh, kindergarten class to a farm and we were picking vegetables. And one of the vegetables we picked was cilantro. And it just had this amazing aroma that I hadn't smelled before. You know, from the grocery store, it doesn't smell the same. It's just fresh out of the ground. It was this, wow, this is amazing. And this is cilantro, really? I mean, I ran home and I couldn't wait to try it in a salad and it was just delicious. And that was my, that was my transformation. I just said, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to get cilantro from now on. This is fantastic. So it is one of those uh, polarizing herbs where, you know, either you love it or you hate it. So I use it in guacamole and salads, uh, a lot of Indian dishes, um, and like I said, I use it in baked goods, which is not usually how you use cilantro, but like I said, coriander, which is the dried version of it, is, um, is really very good. I use it in my blondies. It's a, uh, this is my blondies and coriander goes into there. So it's really, it, it, it just makes it taste a, a little different than you would expect a blondie to taste. And some people like it. Some people don't, so it's up to you, but I I happen to like it. So that's another way to flavor your food. So 14 is ginger. Now you can get powdered or you can get, um, you can get the real, the, the, the real thing here. And what I do is I get a knob of ginger and, you know, usually it's just too big to keep in your fridge because then it goes bad. So what I do is I peel the ginger, I cut it up like into these types of sizes and then I freeze it so that when I want it I just take out one little knob and I have it for whatever for a saute for a smoothie and then you don't have to waste the whole thing and you don't have to worry about it going bad because it never goes bad in the freezer and then I have it for a really long time and I it's just like this pungent taste that's so delicious um I use it in stir fries this is my stir fried ramen if you could see that, this is a stir fried ramen with a lot of ginger, it has a garlic ginger sauce, delicious. Um, what else do I use it? I use it in everything. Cause I love, I happen to love ginger. Um, maybe it might be pun- too pungent for some people but I happen to love it. So that's ginger. And the last one, 15 is horseradish. Horseradish is also very pungent, very strong and the now this is not horseradish. This is um, this is a parsnip, but they they were out of it, Whole Foods. So I wanted to show you what it looks like. Horseradish actually looks exactly like this, but it's a darker a darker skin. And what I do is I peel off the skin and I chop up the horseradish and I add a quarter cup of vinegar and a quarter cup of lemon juice. And then in the food processor, I just keep pulsing until it becomes like prepared horseradish. If you see prepared horseradish in the store, it has a lot of sodium, salt, which is a lot of sodium. So this doesn't have sodium because you're just making it from scratch. You're not adding salt and you have something that you can use as a dip. You could add it to recipes. I actually make 
um, these, I'll show you, it's really good. These knishes. Um, so if, if you have never had knishes, they're really good. It's just like dough and then you stuff it with potato or kasha or whatever you want, spinach. And it's, re it's really fun. And then you could dip the, um, you know, you could dip that into horseradish, um, to, to the prepared horseradish. You have to prepare it, you know, and the, the same with potato pancakes. This is by my potato pancakes. Um, that's also, you could use it as a dipping sauce for potato pancakes. So um, it's very pungent when you make it, you have to be careful because when you open up the food processor after uh, breaking down the enzymes of the horseradish, it sort of attacks you. <laughs> so you have to stand back and open it up and, and then you'll be safe. And maybe open up a few windows because it's really, really strong. And those are the 15. Can you um, then, pause for a moment? The horseradish recipe, was it one fourth cut lemon and one fourth cup? What else? Can you repeat that one more time? Oh, sure. Yeah, one fourth cup of the, um, uh, so uh, here it is. So it's an eight inch long root of, of horseradish, a quarter cup of vinegar, you can use white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, and then a quarter cup of lemon juice. And that's it. And then just pulse it with, with the horseradish until it becomes like, like prepared. You know, it's not, not totally smooth, but it's smooth enough. It's sort of like a dip. And that's how um, I like it. And, you know, you could dip whatever you want in it. It's, it's, it's potent. It's really good. And it, it's really good for you. It's like a nasal clearing root vegetable. That's that's what it is. And then I came up with some, some different flavor combinations for you. So get your pads and pens ready because for each ethnic cuisine, there are certain spices and herbs and vinegars that you wanna use for that particular cuisine normally. I mean, you know, there are no rules, but in general for Asian cuisine, you wanna use garlic, ginger, rice wine vinegar and mirin. That's mirin is that Japanese vinegar that I told you about. For Mexican food, the spices you wanna use are cumin, chili powder, cilantro, and lime juice. Okay, for Italian cuisine, you wanna use garlic, oregano, red pepper, and onion powder. I think I meant red pepper flakes for that. Now, this is what I call for like a summery day, the summer solstice. So you wanna use lemon juice, parsley and dill if you want something light. And then for winter, I call it winter warmth. You get your ground black pepper out, your cloves, your ginger, nutmeg and cinnamon. Now, for those that are trying to keep up, don't worry that all registrants will receive the recording of this event in, within 24 to 48 hours. Because, you know, we're not going to be able to remember all this fantastic information. So just, just a reminder, everybody, you will get the recording of this. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah, no, that's it. That's it. So those, those were it. And then, um, you know, if you have any more questions, I'm open to answering them now. Thank you so much. We had a couple questions, which I think I know the answer to, um, about Mrs. Dash. I assume, well, how do you feel about the salt-free Mrs. Dash? You know, I'm sure it's fine. I, I don't use it, but I think it's fine. Um, okay. I'm not sure what they use, but yeah, I don't think it has any salt in it. So yeah, the salt-free Mrs. Dash should be fine. Okay, that's good to know. I've never bought Mrs. Dash, so I didn't know if it has yeah, salt. I'm not sure, but yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, great. Um, honestly, I'm scrolling through and I think I got everyone's questions because I was reading them out to you as we were moving along. Um, guess oh. if you have any questions about those 15 salt-free, salty tasting options, please let us know now. And also I do like to remind people that sometimes I'm think of questions later. So if you have a question later after the event, feel free to oh. email me, Megan at pbnsg.org and I'll type that in the chat box. And oh. then I will email Debbie and get the answer and share it. So um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I wanted to tell everybody that if you go to WW, I know Megan mentioned it at the beginning, but um, I want to mention it again because some people came in later. 
just go to www.debbieadler.tv. Maybe Megan can type yes. that in. Um, you can put your email in and opt in for 18 free recipes. And you, so you could get the recipes that I, I, some of which I've been speaking about and you get them free right away. So just go to, and put it, you have to put in the www, otherwise it doesn't go to the right page. So it's www.debbieadler.tv. And then right on the first page, you can ju just opt in and then you'll get um, instructions on how to uh, get it into your own account. And then you'll, you'll, see, you'll see in the library that I send you 18 Plan Powerful recipes that I think you'll enjoy. Oh, great. So, yeah, so that I typed in I typed in your site twice on the chat box, and again they'll receive the recording so they can refer back to it as well. Oh, okay, um, great. I did see a question. Um, would you uh, just remind us one more time of the Italian? Read the Italian again. I guess they go ahead. Yeah, so the Italian is garlic, oregano, red pepper flakes, and onion powder. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm actually going to go to debbieadler.tv after this and check out. <laughs> and for everyone, I actually have her cookbook because we met you a few years ago when I was blogging for Walker's Way. And I've met, made many of your recipes and I have yet to try one that I do not like. And they're not, you know, some recipes are time consuming or difficult. And I wouldn't say any of the ones that I've done of your recipes are time consuming or difficult. So, and they're all yeah. tasty. That's all I really care about. Oh, good. Um, so oh, if anyone has any more questions, please type in now, or again, you can email me later. I'll reach out to Debbie. Debbie, thank you so much for your presentation. You're you know, welcome. Everyone has their Achilles heel on what's hard to, to not consume. You know, cheese yeah. is one of them, but salt is definitely another one. Um, so yeah. it's really great to know these 15 alternatives to, yeah. you know, kick the salt, shake the salt habit. That was the name yes. of the presentation. Yes. I, uh, yeah, I agree. It is hard, but there are ways to get around it. So um, that's why, that's why I like telling people because, you know, you shouldn't feel deprived. No, that's we shouldn't. No. Right. And um, I'm sure I've typed in the name of your cookbooks a few times. Um, so hopefully some people will check that out. Oh, They're all you. phenomenal recipes. So thank you everybody. And thank you, Debbie, for being here. And I just want to remind everybody that you will receive the recording in 24 to 48 hours. Email me if you have any questions that you want me to ask Debbie. Um, and one last reminder, our next event's a week from today with the vegan MD, Dr. Miranda Graham. So that should be great as well. And um, keep your eyes out for the specialized groups. Um, and hopefully maybe we'll have a specialized group that focuses on sodium because that's actually would be a phenomenal group topic because we're gonna have topics such as heart disease and cancer and diabetes and cooking. But I can't imagine a better group than hypertension or something related to, to salt consumption. So yeah. um, thank you everyone. And also if you're looking for another cookbook, we have our plant PBNSG cookbook that I also love, uh, Perfectly Plant-Based, which is on our website on the shop, shop tab. So that's another one that I always recommend. Um, I have my favorites and honestly, Debbie, yours is actually on the top of my pile, about four or five. Oh, of them really. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for coming. Um, have a great night and thank you yeah. again, Debbie. Thank you, Megan. Take care.